One thing we always have to worry about when we're talking about the change in energy, and this is going to be important, and it's going to actually be helpful for us tracking uh, where energy is going and figuring out how much energy is transferred, is the first law of thermodynamics. Okay? So the first law of thermodynamics is basically a rehashing of the uh, law of conservation of energy. Okay? So the first law of thermodynamics, and there are three, so get excited, which is the first. The first law of um, thermodynamics says that the energy of the universe is conserved. Okay, so what do we mean by conserved? Anybody want to take us? Not wasted? Okay, so not wasted, not losing any? Yep, exactly. All right, so the law of conservation of energy is we can't create or destroy energy. This is saying the same thing. So it's conserved, we can't lose any, and also we can't create any. Okay, it's conserved. It's going to be constant. All right. So again, it's a rehashing it, but you'll hear that, you know, uh, law of conservation of energy, law of conservation of angular momentum. Conservation means that it's staying constant, okay? Can't lose or gain any. But we do know it can be transferred, right? Okay, we're going to be transferred. And that's one of the things we're going to track. When we want to measure how much energy is being transferred from a uh, chemical system, most of the time we're not going to measure the transfer of uh, energy directly from the reaction. We're not going to be measuring the reaction. We want to measure where the energy is going or coming from. And so what we do is we uh, create uh, this sort of um, uh, this way of thinking is that, okay, we have our system... All right, which I usually abbreviate as my SYS, my system. And it could transfer energy, okay, with a terrible E, out, and we'll have names for that. Or I can absorb energy, okay, where is the energy going to or coming from? We call that the surroundings. which we use a very as SUR. Okay, so a lot of, uh, so what we'll be doing is usually we'll be looking at the surroundings uh, when we measure things, but we can uh, look at it from either way. All right, so let's, this is before energy transfer on this diagram. Okay, so this is my initial state, energy in my initial state. And it says that, okay, just, you know, for, you know, just for an illustration, we say the system has half a tank of energy, okay? and the surroundings has a quarter tank, right? After the change, anytime we see an arrow in chemistry, we know a change occurs, and then after the energy transfer, uh, the system has a quarter tank. So the system lost the quarter tank. Okay? That energy had to go somewhere, it just can't disappear, it has to be conserved. Where do we say the energy went? It went to the surroundings. So now the surroundings, which started out as a quarter tank, now it has a half tank. It always has to go there. Now, it could have been the reverse. The surroundings sort of could have started out with a half tank, lost a quarter. Where'd that energy go? It would have been the system that picked it up. Our chemical system or our physical system could have picked it up. So it can go either way, but if something loses some amount of energy, the other one has to gain that exact amount. Okay, we can't, so that's conserved. Okay, so that's what we're going to have to follow the law, first law of thermodynamics, but that will actually help us. Um, keep track and measure how much energy a chemical system gains or loses. Usually we're measuring the surroundings. So if a chemical reaction is going on in solution, we'll measure the solution, we'll measure the temperature of the solution. Or if the chemical system is going to do work, we'll measure the volume of the surroundings and figure out how much work it's doing. 